That's all your house is? It's a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. <laughs> now, sometimes, sometimes you've got to move. You've got to get a bigger house. Why? Too much stuff. <laughs> you've got to move all your stuff. And maybe put some of your stuff in storage. Now imagine that. There's a whole industry based on keeping an eye on your stuff. Now, sometimes you go on vacation, you got to bring some of your stuff with you. Let's say you're going to go to Honolulu. You're going to go all the way to Honolulu. You've got to take two big bags of stuff, plus your carry-on stuff, plus the stuff in your pockets. And you get all the way to Honolulu, and you get in your hotel room, and you start to put away your stuff. That's the first thing you do in a hotel room is put away your stuff. And I'll put some stuff in here, put some stuff down there. Here's another place for some stuff here. I'll put some stuff over there. You put your stuff over there. I'm putting my stuff over here. Here's another place for some stuff. Hey, we got more places than we've got stuff. We're going to have to buy more stuff. The monetary system wastes limitless amounts of resources in replication, duplication of products that are not necessary. They change the style of automobiles, put a fin on the end every year, or make it look different. So the whole idea was they get you to get a new refrigerator, a new television set, the necessity of you purchasing more goods. Have you ever wondered why women's shoe heels go from fat one year to skinny the next to fat to skinny? It's not because there's some debate about which heel structure is the most healthy for women's feet. It's because wearing fat heels in a skinny heel year shows everybody that you're not as valuable as that person in some ad. It's to keep us buying new shoes. How many of you know what planned obsolescence is? Engineers today design electric bulbs and motors, electric motors, to die out at a certain time. They deliberately withhold efficiency so things will wear out and break down so you'll have to buy new things. The products that they sell you are deliberately, deliberately designed to wear out, break down, so you have to continually service those things. You notice that your telephone is pretty reliable? Well, we here in America can think. We can design things that don't wear out and don't break down and don't require maintenance at all. There used to be one thing that people had in their home that never broke down, and it didn't belong to you. That's a telephone in the old days, made by the phone company. It was designed not to break down, because then they'd have to service it. So you, you could drop out of the floor, it's heavy. You buy these cell phones today, junk, they run a, a little beyond the warranty. It takes good engineering to do that, to design things to wear out and break down after the warranty. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the instrument, yes. the phone, that stays forever. You bet. If the automobile companies had to maintain their cars, it would be a phone. Oh, yeah, the phone company has to maintain the phone. You bet. That's why it's good. That's why your units hold up. I never thought of that. I don't. Most so a phone never, I mean, you know, operators can be bad. Yeah. This can be bad, but the phone itself... Well, it's the same for your TV sets, by the way. You mean if, if RCA, if everybody had to maintain their own... You bet. They'd all be... They run the automatic system which you pull out, shove in a replacement unit. If your engine breaks down, they pull out the engine, shove in the courtesy engine, and you take off. Why hold up the whole car when you need a battery job? If you did that in the Army Air Force, you couldn't <laughs> operate at all. Your society is really comprised of very stupid men. Let me say it again. All politicians, all lawyers, all businessmen will be phased out. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. It's not going to be a revolution. You don't need it. Our society cannot be maintained by this type of incompetency. It was great, the free enterprise system, about 35 years ago. That was the last of its usefulness. What is happening to man is that his technological society, the newer value systems that dominate our times, that are pressing onward, are just leaving behind hundreds of thousands of people that cannot make the transition. You go to your parks as statues of warriors on horses. No Madame Curie, no Louis Pasteur, all the people conquer disease, greed, stupidity. We admire all the wrong people. We can knock all of the fluid off clothing today by vibration. 
we can knock fluids off clothing. In other words, if you could move a piece of fabric from position A to position B rapidly enough, the fluid will remain behind. Ultrasonically vibrating the fabric can remove the fluids. And you need not contaminate your waters. You don't have to use any of the system today. You see that when you take off in an airplane and you look down and you see everybody's got a little pile of stuff. Everybody's got their own pile of stuff. That's all your house is. Your house is just a place for your stuff. If you didn't have so much goddamn stuff, you wouldn't need a house. You don't want records, tape recorders, all this junk that requires continuous maintenance. All you want is the music you like. You dial it and you get the music. You don't need to pick up records or store them. You live in an insane culture where we duplicate things. In our society, that is a resource-based economy, machines free people. You see, we can't imagine that because we've never known that kind of world. All repetitious jobs will be phased out. We feel that machines ought to do the filthy or the repetitious or the boring jobs. That man has to be free to pursue the higher things, the higher possibilities of man. What jobs uh, that we now know will not be present in this concept? A like most, garbage men gone, right? Yes. All repetition. All mail people working in fact, No mailmen, no waitresses, no waiters, no cooks. Uh, there'll when be no jobs. When you go out jobs. to eat, how will you get your food? Well, there are beautifully designed uh, uh, areas for eating in which you have all kinds of food. Japanese, French food, organic food, and the standards, if you like it. And how would it get to you? The way the food gets to you. What we do is monitor the behavior of the cook. That is, we do a multi-channel tape on the best cooks we know of. You're and as they prepare their guy. food, as they prepare their food, we tape every move they make and how they handle the food and how they dice the carrots the way you like it. Then you dial 2736 and you get the kind of food you want, Chef Milani style or individualized. This you can even tape folks. your own cooking. I remember five years ago I used to laugh at you, and now all this is very believable. It's a very different system. And it's very hard to talk about because the public is not that well enough informed as to the state of technology. We're going to do this thing just as the automobile phased out the stagecoach, just as television stepped in and phased out the old vaudeville and the old motion pictures, that history and technology is respecters of no society, no individual opinions, but it moves on. And we've got to be prepared to face the future. If you turn off Boulder Dam, all the food would spoil, the lights would go out, traffic would stop, trains would stop, planes would stop. Now, everything you got is technical. There's nothing politicians give you. They can't. If you don't believe me, go to any supermarket. You see a lot of food, hardware, wrenches, machines. All that. We can turn out things in abundance. What the hell are you selling things for? People should have access to these wonderful gifts that people have. If you took all of the gold and all of the wealth of this country, all of the certificates of debt and all of the land ownership, all of the diamonds and rings, and dumped it off the coast of Japan, as long as you didn't touch our way of thinking, our technology, and our resources, we would not be impoverished at all. America's wealth is not its gold, is not its banking institutions. These are false institutions that the entire money structure and materialistic oriented society is a false society. Ten or fifteen years from now, our society will go down in history as the lowest development in man. We have the brains, the know-how, the technology, and the feasibility to build an entirely new civilization. People don't know what machines can do today. They have no idea. Kids will ask their parents, didn't you see the necessity of machines? Dad, couldn't you see that war was inevitable when you produce scarcity? Isn't it obvious? Of course the kid will understand that you were pinheads raised merely to serve the established institution.